Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again, introducing you to my Dark Souls video walkthrough. We're now going to be making our way through the catacombs, and we're pretty late on doing this because I haven't even killed Pinwheel yet. And for a lot of people who are experienced in the game, Pinwheel is someone that people go to really early on because he enables you to kindle the bonfires to a much higher limit so you can get more Estuses and you can survive for much longer. But you'll notice in my playthrough that I've done it at such a rate and in such a way that I don't generally need that much Estus. And that's not uh, an, an ego thing, that's not me trying to, to buff you know, my, my player skill or anything like that. It's just I'm really experienced with the game. I've played it quite a lot and I know what I'm doing. So I can comfortably do that. If you're a new player and you want as much Estus as pro possible, I would advise kindling every fire. I would also advise going into the catacombs after you've got the, the Lord Vessel so that you can kindle fires even higher. But if you want to challenge yourself and if you want to get better faster, do not kindle fires. It's that simple. You'll have less Estus and you'll value it much, much more. The biggest problem with having 20 flasks when you're running around is you get lazy and you get laps and you'll get hit, you'll you'll not fight properly, you'll not learn to dodge, you'll just tank everything because you can keep on flasking and your general ability will not get any higher than perhaps you know somebody who's just turned the game on and you don't want that. Dark Souls is a very skill based game as I show you how skilled I am with the halberd and missed this enemy twice. But you're probably wondering why I said I'm going into the catacombs and yet I'm over here. The reason I'm over here is because I'm killing these bugs in, in hopes of getting the Sunlight Maggot Helm. The problem is, it actually took me 20 runs to get this helm, that's how unlucky I was. And I had 10 humanity when I was doing it properly, I had the ring on and everything, and it really pissed me off. But instead of showing that, I've trimmed it out. So, I'm coming down towards the Firekeeper. I'm not entirely sure why. I think it's because I wanted to go down to the, the the New Londo ruins and then I decided against it. We will soon see. I'm having one of those moments where my brain remembers what I'm supposed to be doing, but my hands haven't quite reacted yet. So, check the old equipment, make sure I've got the Divine Club, and then we can make our way to the catacomb. And the catacombs is reached through the graveyard, if you've never been in it. I wouldn't blame you, the graveyard is a very intimidating place to new players. Uh, Framp's going to be real mad at you if you talk to Karth first, but if you run past him and don't let him finish his dialogue, he never he never goes away and has a party. It's pretty funny. I always walk past him like, fuck you dude, I don't care what you say. But This is a path through the graveyard so that you don't have to fight anything and I can get you to the first bonfire without uh, a single fight and usually without getting hit. But this is all from experience, your first few times through this area are not going to be quite as comfortable as mine because I know where I'm going. And immediately you'll notice this place is significantly darker. And believe it or not, this is fucking bright compared to the Tomb of the Giants. The Tomb of the Giants is ridiculous. There is no light whatsoever except for the, the crazy glow your character gives off. And that is definitely one thing I'm glad they toned down from Demon Souls because in Demon Souls you look like you, you're a fucking candle. It's ridiculous. And I have no idea why I'm stressing the syllables of ridiculous to make it sound more ridiculous, but that's exactly what I'm doing. But right there in those brief seconds, a really important thing just happened. Did you see the, the crazy looking uncle? Kind of like a an Uncle Fester who's on a diet and uh, is looking you know, slightly less pale and more dogshit brown. He is a necromancer. And the necromancer is the one who brings the skeletons back to life when you kill them. Because the most important part about the catacombs is if you come down here with anything but a divine weapon, the enemies are going to keep reassembling, Jason and the Argonauts style. You can't kill them. The only way to permanently kill them is to get the necromancer who's reviving them. And you can do that, it is a legitimate technique to just run and, you know, kind of bum rush the, the necros. But... I generally come down with the Occult Club, which has then been, you know, unascended into a Divine Club, and it is by no means the best weapon against the Skeletons because its damage isn't great enough, but the Skeletons are really weak against Blunt Damage, and Blunt Damage is any weapon that obviously isn't sharp, it's like hammers, it's like clubs, it's like maces, and the reason it's effective is because it knocks them into a pile of bones and they have to reassemble. 
and it's 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 pretty much the ultimate stun lock, so it's really useful. As I get the, the running backstab on the, the necro there, pretty funny. You do not have to come in this room, by the way. There is a shortcut that completely skips out this part of the catacombs, but I wanted to do it just because I've, I've not spent all that much time in any of the areas, and I'm running through this very quickly, and this is one of those places that sometimes it can benefit you to, to do a little bit more than you necessarily would, because the shortcuts through this area, some of them are harder than others, and some of them involve pretty finicky jumps, and if you're not comfortable with the jumps, you might want to avoid them at first. Uh, if you don't care, then you're fine. You'll be good. Now, this is the Lucerne, one of the strangest weapons in the game. It, it looks kind of cool, it's got a unique weapon set, but it's statistically improbable. It just... There is no situation which benefits using that weapon. Which is sad to say. As I continue my way through this area. The shortcuts that I'll be showing you in these videos will skip all the NPCs in the, the catacombs. It will skip the shortcut to the the blacksmith, good old Vamos. So this is by no means the path that is going to get you everything in the catacombs. You might want to explore before you decide to, to skip the stuff. But these shortcuts are so powerful, guys. They, they really are. This is one of those parts of the game that a lot of people don't enjoy. So the fact you can do two slash three tricky jumps and completely avoid it is a godsend. And my first time through the catacombs, I did the shortcuts from this bridge. I, I pushed the lever and then I jumped off that bridge down to the second uh, hidden... Well, I say second. It's the second bonfire of the catacombs, but it's the first hidden bonfire. But if you step up here, you can actually skip all that by walking or rolling off that little ledge to land on this. It does a lot of damage, but you can survive it if you're full life. Make sure you get away from the edge or that'll happen. Those Wrath of God crazy floating heads. Bunch of Nicolas Cage bastards, you want to watch them. And then if you just either walk or roll... Uh, I made the mistake of, of being too aggressive in my role there and it nearly cost me. And you'll notice the skeletons can be quite active here. They can drop down after you. Uh, it's a little annoying but it shouldn't be too lethal unless you get sloppy. But you can actually just walk off this corner and land like I do on here. And this ledge one I'm standing on, if you're in human form, you can summon Paladin Leroy for the pinwheel fight. But as you can see, I'm not in human form and I'm not going to do that. This room I'm standing in is one of the most dangerous rooms on the game because it features an enemy that is fickle yet deadly, and that is the bone wheel skeleton dudes. These can do some serious damage in no time. They can eat through your shield, eat through your stamina, and then hit you. And if they hit you once, they'll hit you several times. And I'm telling you, do not get hit by this enemy. Extremely deadly. But look at that nonsense. <laughs> the Black Knight Halberd fails me again. You've got to love it. But this is the boss fog. You're going to fall into the environment, and then it's going to cue a cutscene, and then it's the pinwheel fight. So Pinwheel is the weakest boss in the game, I believe. Uh, he takes a lot of damage from almost everything, and he doesn't have that high life, so you're going to notice some serious damage being dealt. So three slashes, and he's down. But one cool thing about him is he, he drops some of the most useful masks in the game. So you'll notice I just got the Mask of the Father there. That's probably one of the weaker ones, but... It is part of a set of three masks, and they are easily the the best piece of headgear you can wear, because the abilities they give you are better than any of the buffs you will get from helmets. And because of this, the PvP is saturated with it, and so much so that a lot of people don't wear them on principle. And uh, I don't know why I have that principle, but you know, if everybody's using something, I generally stray away from it, and that's why I don't wear the the family masks. Functionally, it's insane, but stylistically. You are rocking out with your cock out. Thanks for watching, and you take care now.